Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to read the computer schematic. So of course, if you understand just how to read one schematic, you can understand any other schematic, whatever the type of the computer. So let's get started. So as you can see, this is a block diagram of a laptop motherboard, as you can see here. This squares means chips and ICs, as you can see, okay? So each square here means an IC or a chip. So as you can see, for example, here we have the Azalea codec. This is basically an IC. Its reference is 1981, okay? This is Azalea codec, as you can see. So this IC, as you can see, exists in page 43, as you can see. Okay, here we have P43, means page 43. So we have AD1981HD. Let's see this IC in the motherboard, as you can see. Here we have the IC in the motherboard with the same reference as we have seen. We have AD1981HD, as you can see in the motherboard. As you can see, we have Azalea codec. Okay, this is the IC in the motherboard. So, so this IC is responsible for the audio in the whole motherboard okay so it controls speakers audio ports etc so if you have any failure with audio system means you should check this IC maybe the IC is bad or the components around it are failed so now we're gonna check the page 43 to see the circle di diagram of this ic here as you can see we are in page 3 as you can see we have sheet 3 of 63 so let's check page 43 right now so let's check page 43 right now and look for this ic the circle diagram of this ic with reference of ad 1981 hd okay so here as you can see this is the page number 43 as you can see okay so basically we should find the circle diagram or the schematic of the azalea codec here so let's check here we go as you can see here this is the same reference we have ad 1981 HD, okay, so this is the schematic of the IC that we have seen before. As you can see here, we have the audio VCC. This is basically the working power for this IC. As you can see here, we have HP out, so out signals and input signals. As you can see here, so this IC basically is connected to speakers, to audio ports, audio connectors, etc. All audio part in the motherboard so let's check another ic in order to go deeper into understanding the basics of schematic reading here for example we have the key pc or the keyboard control as you can see 10 21 so basically this is the control for the keyboards so let's check first the motherboard to see the reference as you can see the same reference as we have seen in the schematic okay so basically this is the keyboard control you will find this ic always near to the bios and to the chipset or the third bridge as you can see okay so the keyboard control 1021 so this basically this ic exists in page 37 as you can see p37 so if we go to page 37 we gotta find this ic so let's check page 27 so as you can see this is page 27 so let's check the reference as you can see here keyboard control 1021 as you can see okay we have here u27 okay this is the reference designator for this ic u27 so if we go to the motherboard we should find u27 next to the keyboard control okay so let's check in the motherboard. As you can see, this is the IC or the keyboard control. 
here we have u27 as you can see exactly the same as we have seen in the schematic okay so you can use this working principle for the whole ICs and chips of the motherboard. So let's check another example here. For example, let's check this example here. We have the system charger and the DC to DC system power. Basically here, all about power. Okay, so the system power is in page 6 through page 13. Okay, from page 6 to page 13. We gotta find all about DC to DC system power. Of course, we gotta find 3 volt, 5 volt system power, the CPU system power, the RAM system power, the VCCP system power, etc. Okay, so for, from page 6 to page 13. Here we have the page 6 as you can see. Okay, so let's check. Here as you can see, this is the power conversion. So in this page, we have just the circuit that is responsible for the power, okay? To convert power from DC to DC, okay? So let's check the next page. This is basically the page number seven. So here, as you can see, this is the three volt, five volt power margin IC, as you can see. This is basically the three volt, 5 volt power management AC. Its reference is TPE 51120. So this IC is responsible to generate 3 volt and 5 volt. As you can see, we have here 5 volt. Okay. So it generates 5 volt through this MOSFETs inductor and this capacitor. This is a filtering capacitor. Here we have the pad one, the test point where we can check whether we have 5 volt or not so we will find these parts in the motherboard okay so here in this channel as you can see through this MOSFETs inductor and this capacitor we can get 3 volt of course this is the part 2 where you can check whether you have 3 volt or not so basically the parts are, are, are like at this point so let's check this IC also. Basically, here we, we are in the page, as you can see, page 8, where we have 1.5 volt and 1.8 volt. So basically, these voltages are for the RAM and the chipset, like the North Bridge and the South Bridge. So here we will get. 1.5 volt of course we have here thermosets inductor and capacitor the same here to get 1.8 volt you should have some components like mosfets inductor and capacitors the capacitor basically to filter the power or to make the power or the current a dc current okay here as you can see we have another power management IC so basically this IC is to generate the VCCP okay the VCCP is for the processor and for the CMCH and the ICH as you can see we have plus VC, VCCP basically VCCP is around 1.05 volt as you can see here we have plus VCCP so this power is for these three chips GMCH, the CPU, and the ICH. So basically here we have the CPU power management. I see, as you can see, for the, C the CPU we have two channels, as you can see. So this power management IC is responsible for generating the plus VCC core. So the plus VCC core is the main power or the working power for the CPU. So let's check the page 11 where we have do another power management IC as you can see here we have 1.8 volt and 0.9 volt the half of the input voltage so 0.9 volt is the VTT the RAM VTT or the voltage terminals because the RAM basically or random access memory has two voltages the main voltage in this case 1.8 volt and 
the VTT voltage 0.9 volt. So this is the DDR2. Basically, DDR2 has 1.8 volt and 0.9 volt. 